folks and welcome to the Hillbilly Kitchen. Today we're going to be making hamburger soup. Now hamburger soup is one of those things that you really can put in whatever you want and however much you want. Somebody commented and said I should really do an apron that said uh, put in however much you like or add however much you like. But this is an add however much you like recipe for sure. Um, I have about a pound of very lean ground beef and you can use any grade of ground beef. They just happened to have this extra lean stuff on sale when I was in the grocery store. So I bought it. Um, if you use something that's fattier, you will probably want to drain it. Um, if not completely drain it, drain most of the grease off of it. And if you don't want any ground beef in this, this recipe works really good for just a plain vegetable soup. You can totally leave the beef out and make it a vegetarian dish. But start with the pound of ground beef if you don't want the vegetarian version. I have about a pound of carrots here that I have diced up and about a pound of potatoes. I also have um, a little less than a pound of corn. This is a 12 ounce bag of corn and I usually open everything but I left this in the bag to show you this right here. This says non-GMO. I had no idea that there was even a commercially produced um, brand of corn that was not labeled as uh, organic that wasn't GMO. But Sweet Picks frozen corn from Sweet Picks Farms, and they have a whole line of vegetables. They are actually all grown in America, so you're supporting American farmers uh, if you buy this, and they don't have Monsanto corn. So I'll be buying lots of this. I just saw this, and I've bought Sweet Picks before, but I never noticed that. So anyway, I'll definitely be, be buying more of that. Uh, and you have to have some tomato in this recipe. Well, you don't have to, but I always do. Today, I'm just using plain tomato sauce. Um, you can add other stuff in it. And one of my favorite shortcuts or substitutions in this recipe is to use spaghetti sauce. But now it's just bread and I, so we always have leftover spaghetti sauce. So when I make this, a lot of times I'll use spaghetti sauce in it. And a lot of times when my kids were little, um, half of them didn't eat spaghetti sauce. So I had spaghetti sauce left over. We'd have spaghetti one night for dinner and a couple nights later we'd have this soup and I just used the leftover sauce in it. Uh, because I'm using plain tomato sauce today, I'm gonna add a little garlic powder and a little onion powder to mine not a lot and it really is to taste and you can do other spices with this you can add um, like Mexican spices to give it almost like a chili flavor only instead of beans you've got vegetables in it uh, I also have a cup of chopped up onions I'm gonna put those in my beef and brown my beef and I've got a little bit of sugar here now because I'm using this plain tomato sauce, I am going to add a little bit of sugar because the sugar kind of cuts the acid in the tomato sauce and it also really brings out the flavor in it. And I've only got about a tablespoon. It's optional. Um, the corn, when I make mine with corn, especially when my kids were little, I always add the corn at the end of the cooking process because you don't want to overcook corn. It makes it tough. And also because half of my kids didn't like corn in it. So I would cook it, then divide the pot and put corn in half of it and leave the corn out of the other half. So, and another thing you can do with this too is you can add some pasta to it, like some elbow uh, macaroni noodles or something. And that's a great adding in it. I used to do that a lot when the kids were little, but not always. It's just kind of what you're in the mood for. And I'm not adding any pasta to this today because I actually have some leftover pasta and I may add it to some of the soup as I heat it up and eat it. But anyway, let's get this started. Oh, and you do need some salt and pepper. Gotta have salt and pepper anytime you're cooking any kind of meat. Gotta have a little salt and pepper. We're gonna take our um, hamburger and our onions and our salt and pepper over here. We're gonna brown the hamburger first with the onions. I 
I should have already had this pan preheating. And I usually do this over um, about medium heat. I'm probably going to turn it up a little bit um, because I'm going to be standing here watching it. But if you're doing other things in your kitchen, you're cooking other stuff, you won't want to turn it up very high. You'll want to cook it on about medium because ground beef and onions will burn really, really quickly if you're not watching it and it's turned up too high. But on medium heat, it can kind of sit there and cook. Okay, while this meat is browning, let's talk about our vegetables for just a minute. Now, you can use canned vegetables in this recipe. You can use frozen vegetables in this recipe. They will both speed up the process. Um, and we've talked before, fresh is always best when you have time and when it's available. I know it's not always available, so if you don't have it or you don't have time to peel and dice up potatoes and carrots, you can certainly use canned stuff in this, and I have many times, especially on those busy weeknights when the kids were little. If you use fresh, though, um, carrots cook much faster or much slower than potatoes. Your potatoes are going to cook really fast, and your carrots are going to cook really slow. So I have cut them up in different sizes. You can see the difference in the size of my potatoes and my carrots here. And because the carrots are smaller, I can add the carrots and potatoes at the same time and they'll get done at about the same time. So if you're using fresh vegetables, you're either going to have to do your carrots a lot smaller than your potatoes or you're going to have to add your carrots about 15 minutes before you do your potatoes. Now, I kind of like the carrots as small, especially in soup, because um, it spreads the flavor out more evenly in the soup. But if you wanted to just do them in slices and you were using fresh ones, I said just add them about 15 minutes before you do your little potato chunks, and that way all of your soup will get done at the same time and your potatoes won't be absolutely cooked to mush and disappear in your soup. Because if they're the same size, your potatoes are going to be way, way overcooked or your carrots are going to be really crunchy. Okay, I have um, my vegetables covered with water here. Now, I'm not going to dump all of this water in my soup when I'm making the soup. This would be way too much water. I just have these covered in water because I didn't want them to turn brown while I was getting ready for the video. That's the only purpose for this water. I'm going to drain these, but as I cook the soup, I will want to keep enough liquid in it to keep the vegetables um, covered and also want to keep enough liquid in it so that the consistency is like soup. And I'm just going to add water to it. Um, I'm not going to add any beef broth or anything like that. Um, if you want to add that, you can. Keep in mind that that does add quite a bit of salt to it, so you're going to have to adjust your salt. Um, the salt and stuff that I'm putting in mine is just what I will need for my vegetables. So, but if you're doing a canned broth or something, it is going to have salt in it. Uh, I'm not a fan of the canned broths. I've said that before because they almost all have the MSGs in them. And I'm very sensitive to MSGs in food. They do cause migraines. Um, God proportioned the MSGs that are naturally occurring in food in the right of, in the correct amounts for our body to process them. So eating a tomato is not going to give you a headache. But if you eat something that has those added MSGs in it, and you get migraines, it probably is going to give you a headache if you eat very much of it at all. Okay, my hamburger is pretty well done and my onions are starting to get tender. You do want to um, crumble your hamburger meat up pretty good it, so that it's evenly distributed in the soup. Um, it makes the flavor better and just the overall texture of the soup a little bit more desirable, I think. And you can see this meat was really lean. It doesn't have hardly any grease in it at all, so I'm not going to drain it. But if you're using um, 
the regular ground beef or even ground chuck, you're probably going to want to drain some of that grease off. So the first thing I'm going to add is my tomato sauce because I want to start getting that flavor in my meat and I want it to cook in with my other vegetables as soon as they start. And like I said, you can use spaghetti sauce in this if you want to. Um, it would probably even be good with some kind of salsa in it if you wanted the Mexican flavors in it and that kind of spices. You can really season it any way you want to. Alright, and I'm going to drain these vegetables. Okay, once you've got your vegetables in there, you are going to want to add enough water to cover them up. Um, and they do need to be completely covered. And at this point, you're going to kind of get your soup the consistency that you want it when it's done. Um, you may have a little more liquid in it than what you want it to have when it's done, but not very much. Because this doesn't take a real long time to cook, and it's not going to cook down much. And this soup is not going to thicken up much. So whatever consistency you get it at now is going to be about the consistency of your soup. Now I am going to use filtered water in this. Um, I said that before, anytime I cook something like soup where the liquid is going to stay in the recipe or in the finished product, I want it filtered. Now that took about two cups. Um, I may have to add a little more later, but probably not. Mm, yeah, maybe. I'll probably add a little more later. This is a little thicker than I like it. And if you were going to put pasta in here, um, you would probably want to add it now if your carrots are this size. If your carrots are bigger, wait to add your pasta until you add your potatoes. And I have never um, personally tried it. But if you wanted to do a really low carb version of this, you could probably use um, chunks of cauliflower instead of the chunks of potato in this. And it would probably be very, very tasty. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to have a little more water. I put about two cups in there. I'll probably put another cup and a half or so. Put my sugar in. And like I said, that's just about a tablespoon. The onion powder is just to season the um, tomato sauce a little bit. It's not really to season the whole pot of soup because we had all that onion in the hamburger meat. If you didn't do the hamburger meat though, if you um, were doing a vegetarian version of this, you would probably want to still add the onion or it wouldn't have enough flavor or you would have to add a lot more onion powder or maybe some dried minced onions or something. I will add more salt and pepper to this um, for the potatoes and the carrots and the corn and stuff, but I'm going to wait until it's very close to being cooked and taste them and add my salt when it's very close to being cooked because it will take less salt to season them once they're cooked than it does to add it now and then cook it the salt will lose its flavor as it's cooked and I'll have to put a lot more in it. Right, I have about three cups of water in mine now <clears throat> and I'm going to see how that does and see what it looks like after I've added the corn and like I said I'm not going to add the corn until the other vegetables start to get soft. But this is about the consistency that I like mine here. I like some soup in it and but you know not totally watery. Once this pot comes to a boil, we're just going to turn it down to about oh, medium-low heat, just so it's simmering. And we're going to let it sit here and simmer until our potatoes and our carrots are tender. And then we'll add our corn and we'll heat it enough so that everything's heated good and thoroughly and it comes back to a boil. It doesn't have to come back to a rolling boil, just enough so that we know we have everything good and hot. 
Okay, our soup's really boiling good now. So at this point, you can turn it down and put a lid on it. You want, definitely want to put a lid on it. Either that or you're going to have to stir it pretty often to keep it from splattering all over your stove. Now, a lid will not only keep it from splattering everywhere, but it will also make it cook faster. Um, I had something that I wanted to talk to y'all about today, but I've kind of had to change it because I feel like I really need to let you know what's going on. Um, I had, we've made a lot of changes. Um, I had mentioned that uh, YouTube and Google had changed their policies. We did a lot of research into it to find out just exactly what was going on and just exactly what was affected by these changes. Um, our channel took a hit, but it was a little bitty hit um, compared to what a lot of people, what happened to a lot of people. Um, some of the changes that we are making are so that these changes that Google and YouTube are making, they won't be so critical. They won't affect us so much. We will be able to um, talk about topics maybe that uh, have been stricken, uh, for lack of a better word. Um, some of the things that you are no longer allowed to talk about on YouTube without suffering uh, some serious repercussions from Google or anything that has to do with the past. You can't even say other words for the past. Um, you can't mention certain dates or events. Um, there are certain things that have just been basically banned. Um, there are um, some products that have been banned. Um, certainly instruments of the Second Amendment have been banned. And there are many YouTubers that only deal with those subjects. They only deal with the Second, Second Amendment products and they only deal with um, the past and things like that. Well, those creators are no longer receiving any, any kind of income from YouTube. But a lot of them, a lot of the bigger creators, they have um, product deals or sponsorships where companies are sponsoring their videos. And that is something that we are certainly looking into. It is something that we would like to do in the future, but that's only possible with our viewers. Um, you have to have at least 100,000 subscribers, which we are getting very, very close to because so many of you have subscribed. If you have not subscribed, I wanna ask you to please subscribe and also click the notification bell because as things change, um, we want to make sure that you stay updated on what's going on. We don't wanna lose you and um, we certainly don't wanna lose our ability to get in contact with you. If you click that notification bell, you will get a notification if, when we, whenever we upload a video, no matter what our status is, um, uh, you know, with Google and YouTube unless they completely close down our channel, which is a possibility. Um, they are closing down some channels, just wiping them out. And if you're on Facebook, you know that Facebook is doing the same thing, only they're suspending channels for a few days or a week, or, or not channels, accounts. They are suspending accounts for a few days or a few weeks and things like that. And eventually, they will take away your uh, Facebook account if you continue to get strikes against you. Well, it's the same way on YouTube. So, we have a Facebook page, and we are trying to get that turned into a video creator page. Uh, 
I've been working on that some today. So if you haven't, if you're on Facebook and you haven't already, pull up the Hillbilly Kitchen on Facebook and like our Facebook page. If nothing at all else happens, if you like our Facebook page, you will have a way to send us private messages because you can still send messages on Facebook. You used to be able to do that on YouTube. We used to have a, a messenger type thing on YouTube where you could send a private message and I could send one back. We don't have that anymore. So if you haven't already liked our Facebook page, please go do that more than anything just so we have another way to get in touch with you if something happens. So all that, what I have discovered from all the research that I've done is that the agenda of the people who are in control of these new policies is far more important to them than their business because when they demonetized all those videos and all those creators they also lost all of that income and I would speculate it was probably half of the income that YouTube was producing which is a massive amount of money and they were willing to sacrifice all that money in order to push their agenda. At this time, they are not censoring um, anything religious unless it is considered hateful and you use hateful slurs and stuff like that, which we don't do here, or we certainly try not to do that. Um, so we are allowed to say that Jesus is our Lord and our Savior, and we certainly hope that you find Jesus and you know him as your Lord and Savior because it truly is the greatest decision that you can make in your life to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And if you have not done that, if you are interested in doing that, please leave a comment. I'll get back with you. Somebody who watches these videos will get back with you because we want you all to know Jesus. We want you all to know the peace, the power, the love of having God in your life. There is truly nothing greater than knowing the love of your Creator. So, we can continue to spread the gospel. And as long as we can continue to spread the gospel, we are going to choose our words carefully. I've, I've said this before. We know now um, what words Google's computers are looking for, so we're going to avoid those words, and uh, we're going to continue, like I said, to share the gospel. We're going to continue to talk about God's great love for His creation, uh, and as long as we possibly can. Now, I do believe the day is coming when those works will be censored and we will no longer be able to do that. But as long as we can do that and as long as we can keep the videos up here, we are going to. Please do go like the Facebook page so we have another way to get a hold of you and please click the notification bell so that um, you know when we've uploaded videos so that if our videos aren't as visible as they are right now, you will still know when we put them up and you will know when something changes. Um, like I said, we are um, looking into some product deals and hopefully soon we will be able to get some of those so that our um, livelihood won't be tied to accidentally saying a specific word. Um, we're also looking into some products. People have asked for a cookbook. I'm working very hard on the cookbook, praying that it's ready, um, maybe around Thanksgiving so that people can order it um, for Christmas. It will be uh, available on Amazon. We're going to self-publish on Amazon. Uh, so we're hoping to have that done around Thanksgiving. We're also looking into some uh, t-shirt, mug designs, aprons, and that kind of thing. and we're kind of seeing what we can do with that. We probably are not going to go through um, YouTube's regular channels and just give them control of that and that will be handled privately so that that's something that is not controlled by their policies. So keep an eye out for that. 
we're working on it. I will let you know as soon as we have anything. Like I said, I'm working on a cookbook. My mother-in-law's been coming over and helping me type it because she worked in offices for years and she is a very, she's an excellent typist. Um, Brett's pulling together a lot of our photographs out of all of our old files and he's getting those to me. And I'll have to take some new pictures because some of our stuff in pictures is not so good. But we're working on all that and we hope we're gonna have that all put together really soon. So let's check on our soup. You can see that's been popping pretty good and without a lid it would have been all over the stove and all over the kitchen. Like I said, I don't like to add the beef stock to it, but if you do, you certainly can. And when I give these just a few more minutes, then I'm going to test my salt and my pepper and see how much salt and pepper I need. I like this a little with a little more pepper in it than most people do, but I usually don't add as much as I like to the pot because I can always add a little in my bowl. And that's something to keep in mind with salt too. Some people like a lot of salt and you can always add a little salt soup in your bowl. So you don't have to get the pot of soup super salty. Just get, get enough in there so that it's got some flavor and a sprinkle will finish it off for those people who like a lot. Yeah, they all seem to be pretty done. I think they're done enough that I can add the corn and then cook it just a minute and it'll be tender. And you do want to taste it because you have to adjust the salt and the pepper and the onion and the garlic. Um, if you've used the canned broth, you're probably not going to need any more soup. If you've used the spaghetti sauce instead of just the plain tomato sauce, all of your spices are going to be pretty good except for salt and pepper and you'll have to add a little salt and pepper probably. A lot of people comment and they say, I wonder why she don't taste it at the end of the video like a lot of people do or um, they'll ask why I don't taste it. Well, my mama told me not to talk with your mouth full. And I know they do these videos now, they're called muck bakes or something, where it's just somebody eating food. Usually it's not very appetizing looking food either. But I tried to taste stuff at the end of videos as I was saying goodbye in the past and it does not work. My mama was right. You shouldn't talk with your mouth full. So I don't taste the food at the end of the video and I won't be doing muck bakes or whatever that is that they're called. I think I'm pronouncing that right. But I am gonna have to taste this because I have to adjust the spices. Mm. Well, that's actually pretty good. I think it's got enough salt in it. Um, I did add some after I put the vegetables in there. I didn't measure it. I just shook it in there. And it really is to taste how much salt and pepper that you put. I only put a tiny bit of garlic powder in it because I don't want the soup to taste, the garlic in the soup to be overpowering. And you could add a little fresh garlic um, when you cook your hamburger meat. I didn't have any so I just used the garlic powder. And you can also get the minced garlic, which I did have some of, um, you know, on the spice aisle that you add to it. I just didn't think about that. I could have added that in my hamburger. But at any rate, wherever you add it or whatever kind of garlic you choose to use, it, and it's up to you again how much you put. I don't like a whole lot in this, just enough to accent it a little bit. Okay, it's pretty much back to a boil now. It's not a rolling boil, but that's plenty hot enough. Um, our corn is heated good, so it's safe to eat and everything. It does say you want to cook it thoroughly. It certainly has far more ingredients than just the liquid. It does, it's not like canned soup. We're not making canned soup here. 
but that's all there is to it. And like I said, you can substitute about anything. You can add other stuff. Um, you can certainly add peas in it. Let's turn the stove off and take this over here. Now, this would be a good recipe for those programmable pots. Um, like the Sim Pot that we reviewed on here or the Instant Pot. You could cook this entirely in one of those. You can even brown your beef in them and then just throw your vegetables in and put the lid on it and program it for a couple of minutes and it'll all be done. Um, even in those though, I would probably add my corn after it was cooked because it really does make corn tough if you boil it for too long. So save that until the end. Uh, when I eat this, I don't need anything else with it. Uh, my daughter Alex, she likes half pan rolls with it. So if you want bread with it, some kind of rolls is great. Uh, this makes a really good lunch or dinner in the winter because it's got so many vegetables in it, it's going to fill you up. But it's quick enough that you can really make it for lunch if you want. And it's good for those big gatherings because you can double and triple the recipe. You can stretch it with a, as much meat as I had in there. I really could have doubled the vegetables and it would have still been okay. So if you need to stretch your meat and stretch your money a little bit, you can cut the meat down and add more vegetables. You know, like with the pound of carrots and pound of potatoes and stuff, you could have just done a half a pound of meat to stretch it more. Or if you got to feed a crowd, you can add twice as many vegetables. Uh, it's a good one to fix in the morning when you got to leave and put it in a crock pot or something. Just brown your beef and then throw everything in the crock pot. But I hope you give this a try this winter because it is certainly good on a cold, dreary day like what we have here today. Um, we were supposed to have sunshine and 70 degrees. We have clouds drizzle and 58 degrees. <laughs> So we went straight from roasting this summer to freezing to death this fall. Hey, oh well, what are you gonna do? <laughs> we really appreciate y'all joining us in the Hillbilly Kitchen. Please don't forget to click like and subscribe before you leave. Click that notification bell so we can stay in touch and go find us on Facebook if you're on Facebook. Until next time, remember to put God first.